Hi everyone, it's Nicola back in the Stitches and Slapdashery sewing room and I have another tutorial for you today. This time it's for a zipper bag. My last tutorial was for a drawstring bag, probably more for knitters and crocheters projects, but not limited to that. And I wanted to do another one that was a zippered closure. I added a handle onto the side of this one because there's no cord to hold it by. There's a slip pocket inside. It's up to you whether you have the pocket as one big pocket or if you divide it with lines of stitching. I found with this medium sized one that the pocket was a bit big and baggy and was getting in the way when I put my hand in the bag. So I divided it down the middle. With this large size one, I left it as one big pocket and it was fine. Playing with plaids right now. So today I'm going to make the small one and we will make it together. Hope you enjoy. This is later me just going to pop this in before I start the sewing part. Because I was having some microphone issues earlier, I decided to film without any sound and then I'll do a voiceover when I edit. There's a couple of places where I maybe did things in a silly order because I forgot to do them and then went back. And I also forgot to sew the pocket down the middle to make it into two little sections. I said I was going to do that. I forgot. And here we go. Here we have our top exterior pieces and our bottom exterior pieces. You don't have to do this. You could just make it all one piece and have it all the same on the outside if you wanted. Two pieces of cotton batting cut to the full size of the fronts and backs. Two pieces of lining, a label, optional extra. A pocket piece, which will be folded and applied to one of the linings. A piece for the handle. The zipper, which is far too long, but I always like to start with one that's too long, and the bits for the zip tabs. So the order of work is going to be summarised underneath the video, but what we start doing is joining a top exterior to a lower exterior. I've deliberately given you measurements, so they're going to come out a little bit large. The width will be right, but your length will be too long. So once you've seamed the two pieces together, you'll take them over to your cutting mat and trim them. The seam line should be about half way. It makes for a nice proportional look when the bag is finished and the boxed bottoms are made. This fabric was a pest in that it was a little bit warped. I did try and cut it with the print or rather the weave, but it was a bit of a battle to have it actually look straight. I'm using a stitch length for my seams of 2.6 and top stitching is 3.5 and I believe I have a universal 9014 in there. Although this is not very thick denim and a 70 would have been fine. So then I took it to the ironing board, pressed the seam allowances up towards the plaid and trimmed it. This is the pocket piece. No, it's not. It's the lining. And I just fused my label on there an inch and a half down from the top and sewed it on. Not very expertly. Obviously, if you have the sort of label that goes on the outside, then you'd apply it to the outside now.
I would have lined it with the pink and black plaid if I'd had enough of it, but all I had was a, a very small remnant left of it. So we went with a crazy pink sort of batik type tie dye look thing. Time to prep your zipper. Fold the tabs in half, right sides together, and iron them. Grab your zipper, open it a little way, and do some basting stitches across between the zipper pull and the metal stop just to hold it together. Makes it easier for when you're putting it into the tab. And then you trim off the metal stop close to the stitching, hopefully straighter than I managed it. Now the lengths to cut the zipper depend on whether you're making the small, medium or large, and that is listed under the video. So you'll need to trim your zipper to the length stated, and that will allow room for the tabs to be added and the zipper will stay clear of your side seams. You're going to put the end of the zipper into the tab butted up against the inside of the fold. Fold it over and sew across. I just used a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance because that's the side of my zipper. No, press a foot. And it worked out for me. And then obviously you just do the same thing on the other end. So you see how having the stitching at the end of the zipper stops it from flying about in opposite directions when you open the zipper pull. Definitely a good plan. So after you've done that, you push the tabs back away from the zipper and press so that it looks nice. And then what I also do is I add a little bit of stitching across the ends of the tabs just to hold them together when I'm inserting the zipper. And then I'll trim the, the zipper tabs to the same width as the zipper. I've tried it without the trimming and without the stitching, and I didn't like it as much. So this keeps it all under control and makes it easier to sew it in. I found that when I didn't do the trimming, I was putting my double-sided tape on in the wrong area and it would show on the outside of the bag and you definitely don't want that. Here's our pocket piece. You're going to fold it right sides together. Some fabrics, it's hard to tell which is the right side and which is the wrong side. And you're going to sew the sides and a little bit along that longer end but leaving a gap for turning. So I usually start a couple of inches away from the corner and then work my way up to the fold. Now this is the only place in the bag where I would say just use a quarter inch seam allowance because then you maximize the size of your pocket. All the dimensions for the pieces to cut are in the description box underneath the video because they are different, mostly different for each size of bag. Then I trim my corners so that they push out fairly crisply. And then I'll flip it right side out and press it. 
being careful to make sure that my seam allowance is also as straight as possible along the bottom where the, where the edge remains open. I do like this point turner. You can use a chopstick or a knitting needle if you don't have a special one, but they're very handy. So you just push in that, that seam allowance, iron it, and then we're going to top stitch along the folded edge, not, not the opening edge, but the folded edge. The opening will get closed when you sew the pocket to the lining. And that's done. Here's the piece of lining that I applied my label to. I'm also putting the pocket on that side. I consider this to be the back of the bag. So when I join everything together, I'm going to do my best to remember that what I consider to be, to be the back of the bag should dictate how I'm going to put everything together. I'm just measuring from the top to get the pocket positioned in a good spot. I suggest you use a flat surface. I did not use a flat surface. <laughs> this, tr this table for my machine is, is slippery and a little bit angled. It wasn't ideal. I'm just going to throw some pins in there and we're going to sew around it on three sides. Make sure to backstitch at the top corners. And this is, of course, where I would also put any extra lines of stitching from top to bottom to divide the pocket into different sections. At least one, I would say, to make it into two smaller sections. Otherwise, it does have a tendency to flap about. Of course, if you have a specific use for this bag that you may want to keep half a dozen crochet hooks in it, you might want to make the channels narrow, divide the pocket into six. Totally up to you at this stage. I always sew the channels from the bottom of the pocket to the top after having drawn them in with a friction pen. Friction pens are wonderful things. You can iron off the lines. Okay, moving on. I am using some 505 temporary basting spray on my batting so that it will hold my exterior pieces steady while I sew everything together. You can, if you are, of course, use a fusible interfacing or a fusible fleece. It's repositionable, which is just as well because it doesn't always go on just how you want it the first time. Smooth it out, make sure there's no lumpy bits. And then I top stitched it at the bottom of the pink plaid section so that it was holding down the seam allowances behind. So about eighth of an inch away from the seam line on the pink side with the longer stitch length. Remember when you lengthen your stitch length for top stitching to shorten it again for seaming. You can of course do as much quilting on this as you like. If you were going to quilt it heavily or use a diagonal stitch pattern, I would cut the batting bigger and then trim it. This is the handle. You fold the edges in. Well, you fold it in half first, and then you fold the edges into the center, 
fold it in half again and press it and then stitch two lines down the edges. Unfortunately, I seem to have omitted to record that part. I also missed recording the first half of the zipper going in. I put the zipper foot on and here I am. I've already sewn the first half of the zipper in. I have put in the description below, obviously, how to get it going. But we'll see the second part of that in a second. All you need to remember is right side of the zipper to the right side of the exterior, right side of the lining to the wrong side of the zipper. Once you've sewn that, you open it out as I just did, and then two right sides outers together. I actually notched the very center of the zipper with a tiny little snip. I marked the very center of the zipper tape, not including the zipper tabs. And I also, belatedly, pinned the center of my outer and my lining so that I would center the zipper. So I'm just positioning the zipper tape right side down onto the right side of the outer. I am using a double-sided tape. You can pin or clip if you'd rather not bother with the double-sided tape. I have put in thousands of zippers and I still like the extra security of the double-sided tape. And then I put it on the other side as well. It is important to keep it close to the edge where it's going to be hidden inside your bag when you're finished. A lot of these tapes that are available for bag making are wash out. This one I'm not sure about, but I really don't want the hassle of having to wash everything I make before I sell it or give it away. So I'd rather it was just tucked away neatly inside. Always try not to stretch a piece of fabric that's not interfaced. It's easy to do. You can end up with wrinkles or bits hanging off the edges. Just need to move your zipper pull out the way. Normally when you get to the zipper pull, you have to raise your press of foot and just pull it back out the way to finish off. In this case, I didn't have to for some reason. I usually roughly line the right side of my zipper pull, zipper foot with the right edge of the fabric. That usually gives me a good seam allowance, covers up enough of the zipper so it looks good. And there we are. It's ready for top stitching. So I open it out like that and then I press it so that everything's nicely flattened out. My edges were not looking very neat. In fact, what I ended up doing was taking it over to the cutting mat and trimming it. I took it over there and I measured it so that the tabs were the same size and just trimmed off any excess that was sticking out where it shouldn't. Then you want to attach your handle. I got the lining out of the way. I edited out the bit where I accidentally sewed it onto the wrong side and I also sewed through my lining. <clears throat> Confessions of a sewist. So I'm just going to baste that onto the side with a few stitches back and forth. It keeps it nice and steady while you're sewing your seam and it also adds some holding power for later on.
Now, normally I would have top stitched, be top stitched before doing that, but I forgot. And then I remembered that I had to do it. So then I top stitched. So I ended up using my walking foot for top stitching rather than my zipper foot because it was quite bulky. And I had my walking foot butted up against the zipper teeth and it gave a good spacing for going along the edge of the fabric. Longer stitch length again, three and a half. And the top stitching ended up probably about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric, which was perfect. Now, a big point here, don't top stitch from edge to edge. Start your top stitching right next to where the zipper tape starts, not at the edge. Do a little back stitch, but don't go beyond into the tab area because that will mess you up for when you do your side seams. So just be aware to stop before you get to the edge of the fabric. And back stitch again. Another important point open that zipper. You'll be glad you did when it comes time to turn the bag through. Now we're going to grab the two exteriors and the two linings and flip them around so that they're facing each other. You want to push the zipper tab towards the lining and match up those edges. Match this up as best you can. I used a small clip there, but the larger ones sometimes work better when there's lots of bulk. I do also try and match up my seams where the denim and plaid meet on the sides. It's not life-threatening if you can't get it to do it. Make sure that this point here is where you absolutely match it. And if that bit there isn't perfect, it's not the end of the world. Remember the Stitches and Slapdashery motto. Done is better than perfect. So I use my nice little Wonder Clips, which are probably not Wonder Clips, but a generic brand. Just to get everything held together around. What I like to do is put a pin in that bottom area, the bottom of the lining. You can leave the turning gap in either the side seam or the bottom seam. In this case, I'm leaving a gap right there in the bottom seam and I've put a pin there so that I remember. Everything else is clipped except for that. Now when I sew, I always start at that spot where the batting, you can see the batting and the pink meet because I feel like that's the best way to get everything lined up. So I start there. It's, it's pretty bulky. Go slow, hand crank if you have to, and go down one side of the exterior using a three-eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm not fretting about whether that denim and plaid are matching up on the back of the front. So once I've done that side, I flip it over and then I go back to the section where it meets and start sewing again.
It's a bit of a faff sometimes. Just have to take your time. Because it's better to take your time and do it right the first time than have to, uh, shall we say, reverse sew. Once you have to get the seam ripper out, it all gets a bit, a bit slow and a bit annoying. So on this side, I'm going down that side seam. The bulk of that seam is hanging up a bit underneath my walking foot. That's why I had to tug it a bit. So I'm going to go down to the corner, leave my needle in, pivot, and then go across the bottom. And don't worry if the bottom corners look a little puckered. It's not an issue because you're going to be cutting those bottom corners off in a little while. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the intersection there. Now it always looks like it's at a weird angle, but that's because you did some top stitching. And this is why we didn't top stitch all the way to the edge because it really messes you up at this point. So we just have to sort of wangle it so that you're keeping your seam allowance right. And actually with a lining, you can make the seam allowance a little wider because when the lining goes inside the bag, you don't want it to be all bunching up. So if you make it a little bit smaller, it usually sits inside the outer more neatly. So I'm going down, pivoting and going across, but not all the way. I'm backstitching there. And then I'm going to go back to that intersection. So down and around the corner again, and you need a space of maybe three to four inches in the bottom of the bag to turn it out later. Bear in mind that you do need to make sure that you're not too close to your corner when you are finishing your stitching, because depending on the size of the bag, you could be cutting off up to an inch and a half from that corner and you don't want your bottom stitching to be too close to that cut off piece. And there's our turning gap. I trimmed a bit of a bulk away from the zipper tab area so that when it's turned right side out, it's not too bulky. And full looking. Now what I'm doing is marking the squares for the box bottoms. This is the small bag, so I'm cutting out an inch, but for the medium and large, it'll be more. And so I always measure from the seam line. You don't measure from the edge of the fabric, you measure from the seam line. I mark it on both sides and then I cut the pieces out. You could mark it and squish your corners and sew and then trim. But I like to do the cutting first. Just be aware that when you're squishing your corners flat and pulling them so that you can sew them, you don't want to pull on them too hard because the seam line will split. So 
So then you just pull outwards on the fabric. You squish the corners so that the seams match. I like to push one seam allowance left and one seam allowance right. So that they nest together. And also pay attention to which way you're pushing it along the bottom there. So that there's no twist in the seam allowance. It should just make for a smoother finish. It's pretty easy with the denim and batting layers to, root, to, to nest the seam allowances because there's so much bulk you can feel when they're matching nicely. And then you're just going to sew across those corners with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Back stitching at the beginning and end. And in the case of the exterior, when it's something this bulky, I like to back stitch across the seam as well in the middle. It's not like this is a bag that's going to be carrying a lot of weight, but we don't want anything to fall to pieces. We're very close to being done. Then you just reach your hand into the bag. You can push the zipper open further if it's easier. Pull it all through, otherwise known as birthing the bag. Just be careful not to tear any stitches in your lining while you're doing it. And then you can put your hand in there and you can push out the corners of your exterior. Admire how beautifully your seams match. Or not, but that's okay. Push out the areas where the zipper tabs are. Admire how beautifully that that went together, hopefully. <laughs> and then all we're left to do is close up the gap. You put your fingers inside the, the gap there and kind of tug gently outwards. The seam allowances often fall into place beautifully. You can, of course, press before you do this part. You can also hand sew it if you want an invisible result. I always machine sew because it's quicker. As close to the edge of the fabric as you can, run a line of stitching with a little back stitch at each end. Trim your ends and you are done. After I had uh, pushed the lining into the bag, I realized that I had forgotten to divide my pocket. And I also decided that I wasn't going to worry about it. Beautiful. So what do you think? I don't recommend plaid fabric or flannelette fabric for anyone who's a beginner. This stuff, it's so hard to keep it straight. I ended up trimming a little bit off the sides after I had pieced the top and bottom parts together and then added the zipper because I was getting some weirdness happening. Because the 
fabric wasn't quilted to the batting, but only top stitched along that center section. It did shift a little bit. It kind of makes it look messy when you are sewing it and it's not ideal. If you're a beginner, I do recommend maybe a fusible batting or fusible fleece, which will stay put while you are sewing and you won't get as frustrated with it as I got with this. I'm pleased with the way it worked out. Even though I forgot to sew down the middle of the pocket, it's not too bad. It works. If you're using a denim for this, try not to choose one with too much stress stretch as well. Again, if you have no choice but to use a stretch denim, a fusible interfacing or fusible fleece will stabilize that so it shouldn't stretch when you're sewing it. The zipper, unfortunately, you do end up. Where's my other? I don't know where my other piece of zipper went, but as you may have noticed, I started with a really long zipper and ended up trimming it right down. In the instructions underneath, I tell you what length to trim your zip to before putting the tabs on. Yes, there's some waste. I'm saving all my little off cuts of zippers because at some point I think I'm going to do something arty with them. I still haven't decided what. I hope you enjoyed that. Hope it's helpful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon with another vlog. And if I come up with any more ideas for tutorials, you'll know about it when it pops up on the channel. So, bye for now.